Hey guys, welcome to a free course of OpenLM. I am Sagi. I am a part of the support team of OpenLM. Uh, first of all, uh, you'll have to excuse me, I'm working from home. These are crazy times, so you see my house in the background, you might hear my neighbors. Sorry for that in advance. Well, what are we going to talk about today? I am going to take you through a tour of the licensing world starting from the basic license until well up to what open does so we'll go over everything we have two hours <clears throat> so sit back sit tight if you have uh oh i see henry uh harry said uh hello so are most of us yeah crazy times what can i do uh, so yeah, just like uh, Harry, if you'd like to ask something, you'd like to, I don't know, say something, go ahead, use the questions box. There's a little questions box, a chat box you can use. Uh, so just use that. Once I see it, once I finish my sen sentence, um, I'll just uh, I'll just take a look and answer. Will this session be recorded? Yes, of course. We will record this session. Uh, you will all receive the recording afterwards. Uh, hopefully it will go well. So <clears throat> let's start from the top. Software licenses. What are software licenses, basically? Why do we need them? What's all the fuss is about? So. Let me just open up the question box. I'll have it here. Yeah. So what's all the fuss is about? What is it? Basically, when you download any software, you just go online, download it, even if it's a community version, anything, just install it on your PC. You don't know it, but you have a license in there. And it's licensed, a free license for that uh, installation. Now, if you're, any, if you're a private person, just an individual, right. But if you're a company, well, you have to comply. You have to purchase licenses. Uh, licenses have to be done legally. So how do you legalize those softwares? Well, you give a, a license for each software, meaning that Someone wants to use AutoCAD, someone wants to use Inventor, anything. Well, <clears throat> they'll need to have a license for it. One of the engineers wants to use AutoCAD to, I don't know, they have a, a new, new uh, plane design they want to try out and they need to use AutoCAD to create it, to just design it. So yeah, if I have like one user, well, I'll get him one license. That's one my one engineer, that's it. It's cool. But what if I have many? And what if I have many users that each one wants to do different things? Each one wants to uh, use a different product. Maybe they want to use two products at the same time, like uh, Creo and MATLAB and, and <clears throat> whatever he wants. So basically, vendors came up with an idea. First of all, this is the entire history of licensing. <clears throat> Just know that it's starting to look back, but we're gonna get to that, to that in a moment. So first of all, we had single use licenses. It's the easiest way to understand. You've got one user, one license, that's it, simple. But if you have a lot of users, you have 200,000 200, users or 20,000 users, you don't want to buy 20,000 licenses and not all of them are going to use at the same time like i've got i've got 10,000 users in mexico and 10,000 users in i don't know sweden why can't i share these licenses why do i need so many licenses then well that's the big difference <clears throat> between the single use licenses which is basically per workstation or per user. Uh, for example, if you log into any site, you get a user account, password, uh, you, get an, uh, you get a username, same thing. 
you access using username and get a license, or it's just for your specific PC. But okay. Now vendors heard their clients and said, okay, no problem. We'll sell you, sell you licenses that you can share. We'll call them floating licenses because it's like, a, you can think about it like a seat, seats in a play. How many seats do you need? Well, how many are, gonna, are you going to fill? Of course, that you don't need all the seats all the, seats all the time. So how are you going to share those? Now, the problem was here that users could share it between them, meaning that they get a license, they use it, they put it back. Someone else can get the license as well, use it, no problem. But then you have to understand how many licenses you need. It becomes hard because it's a shared license. You might have a hundred users just using 10 licenses because they don't use a whole lot of time and they, their uh, time zones don't really sync up. So the next step was token licenses. It helped with catalogs, basically. What do I mean? Well, you buy a floating license. Let's say, going back to this slide, you got a user that use, uses MATLAB. And let's say we got another user that uses AutoCAD, and AutoCAD has many, many different AutoDesk, sorry, has many different applications. They have uh, might have AutoCAD, Inventor, and well, you need to buy the license. You need to know what your users need. That's the shared floating shared model. You have to know what your users actually need. So that's a problem because oh. I got a user now that needs, I don't know, he needs Creo, but I don't have that. Or um, maybe he needs Inventor, but I don't have that in my package. So I have to go and buy it. It's a problem. So token licenses were invented. What's, what's a token license? Well, it's like uh, carnival tokens. There's a ride. This ride costs 10. This ride costs 7. And at the end of the ride, the only difference here is that you get the tokens back. Meaning, I want to use AutoCAD. I open AutoCAD. I get a bunch of licenses, let's say 10. And those are now reserved to me. These are the uh, token licenses that I'm using. Now, the good part here is that my admin doesn't have to know what I'm using. Doesn't have to know what to buy. You can buy the full catalog, doesn't matter. This is the whole deal. You got a full catalog of, of applications. You got Inventor, you got AutoCAD, da, 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 da. but IBM uses tokens. So uh, you got uh, many different IBM applications because you don't know what they're gonna use. So users can use all of them. They just access the catalog and they can use whatever within the catalog. Each, each thing in the catalog has a different price, has a different token rate. But then, well, you can start seeing a problem here. Uh, floating licenses, let's say I have 100 users on 10 licenses, some people are, are going to get denied. User uh, licenses are not going to be left available. It's like a play. I got 10 seats in a play, and I got the 11th person that wants to come in. He's going to stand. <laughs> He's not going to get a chair. So same thing. So Autodesk decided, uh, hey, let's make a token flex module, which will increase the license availability. You get an unlimited amount of tokens. Just get the tokens that you get, how many you need, but you pay per use. What does that mean? You don't, you don't put the token back. With this token, it's like floating license. You pull it. And then when you're done, you put it back. But with token flex, you just pull it and that's it. It's gone. It's like money. It's like actual carnival token. But now we're actually seeing 
things uh, going back. It's looking in on itself. And now, for example, Autodesk and a few other vendors are saying, okay, no more floating licenses, no more tokens. We are going with single use licenses and that's it. So it's kind of looking back. It's kind of funny. So probably most of you are already licensed admins. Some of you want to be licensed admins. Some of you are in training for it. I don't know. We got it's a free course. We got a lot of users here uh, from all walks of life, I'm sure. What is license admin? Well, let's say you got these many applications. You got all these applications, and all of them got different versions and different licenses and different uh, sub applications, and it gets messy. You need someone to kind of consolidate every, everything into one place, into one person, one source that can manage all this. Meaning that he can, he's the guy that you call up if you ha don't have a license. I tried to open AutoCAD, but hey, I'm not able to open. I need to work. Because if I don't work now, uh, my boss is going to tell me that I'm late on my, um, on my deadline. And well, I, I'm going to call Josh. And you call up the license admin and say, hey, I don't have licenses. So the license admin starts scrambling, basically. Start uh, calling people up, uh, closing workstation, checking whatever he can in order to get licenses for it for those users. Now he also has to keep the right amount of licenses because he also has managers and and yeah, every license admin with an infinite amount of money can say, yeah, buy a million licenses, what do I care? But you need to save, you need to save money. You also have bosses and they also are on your head. They want to reduce the license spending. So this is also what you, what you have to do. You need to keep track of all this convoluted system, all the licensing system in the organization. So, what is the license manager? And how does it work? A license manager is not a person, it's a software. It's a piece of software that's some other vendor created, for example, uh, Flexera, they have FlexLM, <clears throat> but there are many like DSLS from the salt. And when a vendor develops an application, let's say you develop application uh, super cool and you want to get that application uh, on the market and you want to sell it to, to organizations and you want to get money on it. So how can you do it? Well, there are a few options. We'll go with the free route and just give it for free, or you need to have them pay for it. So for how much, for how many? You're not going to develop now something that hands out floating licenses and, and, and susses out all that mess. You're not going to do that. You're just a license admin. Oh, you're, sorry, you're just a, a developer. You created an application. So you call up Flexera, you call up DSLS, and you say, hey, I built an application, it's called Super Cool, and I need to give out licenses somehow. So my users, my clients, will be able to provide their end users with the licenses that they need. So Flexera or uh, the Salt or any of the hundreds of license managers that uh, types that are out there, any of those basically do the same thing. Now, if we're talking about machine bound license, that's super easy. That's you've got a user, it installs it on the PC, you've got the license file embedded into the software or he adds it manually, doesn't matter. It's on the, uh, it's on the workstation itself, it's locked there cannot be shared. But with a floating license server, the license server is actually on, uh, the license file is actually on the license server. Here, the license file is on the workstation itself. The license server now can decide what to do with that license file. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it to this guy, to this guy, to this guy, but not to this guy, he's me. So 
This way, the license administrator has an easier time because now there's there's a piece of software called the license manager. Uh, and you install it on a server, which becomes the license server. And just put the license file there and it shoots out licenses to all the users that need it, but not to this guy. Now, how does it look like? What is it, basically? Well, this is it. Um, this is a license manager. This is how it looks like. It's a simple piece of software that you're able to give it your license file that the vendor gave you. You um, configure it with a bunch of files. We're going to go over it in a moment. And then this simply provides licenses to your uh, to your engineers. And your engineers basically point their workstation to this application, to the server that holds this application. For example, I have Autodesk license server and MATLAB license server here. And now you're thinking, okay, I'm license admin. This is what I get. It doesn't look very complicated. It looks uh, fairly, uh, fairly user friendly. But how can I know what I need? How can I know what's going on right now? How? Well, it's a floating license. I have to know what's going on. If it's a one-to-one -one ratio because I installed it on the workstation, I don't care. But it's a floating license. I need to know how many I have <clears throat> and what's going on and why I have so many users calling me up saying there's no licenses. So yes, uh, Delano, we are going to get you're going to get a, a copy of this presentation as well. Yes. Okay, so going back to our situation here, we need reports, we want data. Well, this is what we get, basically. You see this text? You got it, that's it. Um, as you see, it's not really enough to understand what's going on. It, it does say uh, that Sagi is using from this workstation and is using this feature and cool. But what do I have to to click this perform status inquiry every time and every minute and every second of my working day? That that's that's kind of insane. I needed a tool that does that automatically. That kind of kind of grabs everything from there and just gives me a report. That that's what I need. That, basically what OpenLM is, but we'll get to that. So what does the license manager have? What does it use? It uses a few things, but I'm going to focus on four, four main files and outputs. So first of all is the license output. We've already seen that. You've seen where it came from. Just click perform status inquiry. I can even show it to you live if you'd like. Let's go here, open up this. And when I perform status inquiry, it tells me what's going on. For example, now I see no one's using it. Pretty simple. So <clears throat> basically, the license server has the license output. It outputs through a port uh, of the server. It outputs the data. It says, I have users from this uh, feature, one user, I've got this user from this workstation, and so on. Started on this time, and, and so on. Now, what OpenOM does is grab this information, it reads it, it reads it every second and says, did anything change? Did anything change? Did anything change? And it keeps and stores those changes. And it knows that if a session ended, so this row will end, it knows to write that down and search in the debug log. But I'm gonna get to that in a moment.
Okay. <clears throat> now, what's a license file? Basically, it's the vendor telling you, you have this amount of licenses and you're allowed to use this feature and this feature and this feature. So what we're seeing here is that I have this package. Within it, I have uh, AutoCAD 2016, 2015, 14, 17, and I've got one, like one license on it. And it holds, of course, all the details here, which are hidden. Now, this license file you get from the vendor not from FlexLM, you get from Autodesk, from uh, makers of Creo, from makers of um, uh, Siemens, make, makers of uh, ANSYS, whatever. You get this license file, you, you plug it in the license manager, <clears throat> and it knows how many licenses you have, it knows what to use and what to give out. Now there is, uh, now this file, the license file, is taken in also by OpenLM. So we took what's going on right now, we took uh, all the uh, privileges that you have, all what, what you purchase, basically, the packages, the amounts, and everything. Now, we can also grab debug log and options file. Debug log, basically, is a log in, out, denied. For example, Sagi took a license, uh, Sagi took a license out from this feature using this workstation or he put it back in, or he even got denied. So all of that is written there, and OpenLM, OpenLM stores that, OpenLM reads that. Now combining these two, you can see, okay, if this is a list, if the debug log is a full list of what's going on, and the license output is a snapshot, so we can compare the snapshot and the list to get valid data. This is how OpenLM validates itself. Of course, the denial as well, because they're here. Now, options files, that's basically something that FlexLM has. It's also something that OpenLM reads. Options file allows to decide who gets what. Going back to this example, I've got this guy that I don't want to give a license to. I can decide that he will not get a license via the options file. I say that, buddy, you don't get a license. Or I can reserve a number of licenses for users. Anyway, this is also taken into open a lot. Now basically, as I said, from the output we get usage, from the license file we got all the license information, debug log we get denials, validate the sessions, and options file, we get the group users and basically all the rules that you have there. So, let's talk about OpenLM from here. But before I do that, if you have any questions, just go ahead, just type them. I'll be happy to answer uh, because it kind of concludes the uh, intro to licensing, basically. What is licensing? What is the li who is the license admin? What is the license manager? And so on. Up until now, we didn't really touch OpenLM. We just talked about licensing. Now, there might be more license types than I showed you, but this is the ones we know of. Okay. So, <clears throat> where does OpenLM come in? Because we said, if you have floating licenses, if you have token licenses, it doesn't matter. Well, how many licenses do you need? What do you need to have? Which features do you need to have? Which packages do you have? You don't have that information using the basic text that's coming out of the license manager. Now, a lot of you probably already know this by heart. And a lot of you already are probably, um, have probably impl implemented some tool that you created to kind of read the output and give you some, uh, some 
information, some insight on what's going on. So OpenOM is basically there to give you that, but supported, validated, and most of all, you don't have to keep developing it. Every upgrade they do, you have to change your code. No, we change our code. We'll work for you. All you need to do is double click, install OpenLM, and you're done. Okay. <clears throat> so, OpenLM, how can it help? What can it do? How can it sort the mess? First of all, <clears throat> goes without saying, monitoring. Uh, you need to monitor what you have. Now, if you have one license manager, well, you got like two, three, four licenses. Well, that's, I think you can manage by yourself. You don't need really anything, but it scales up. You might have 100 license servers. You might have 50. You might have 10 different vendors and 20,000 users. It gets messy. So, okay. You'll have the FlexLM. We saw FlexLM. Cool. We understood FlexLM. But wait, you also have a few DSLS ones. Oh, okay. I need to read the data from them as well. But wait, you also have a few RMS, RLM, and the HASP ones. Are you going to read those? Oh, man, I'm not going to do that. I'm going home, basically. So what OpenLM does is monitor all those license managers and get everything into one place. You don't have to you don't have to RDP anywhere, you don't have to open any interfaces of any license managers. Everything is consolidated into just one place that you can monitor and see what's going on. So if someone is using a um, Katia calls you up. You don't have to go to Katia and check and uh, someone else calls you for Autodesk. You don't have to go to the Autodesk license server and check. You just check both in OpenLM. Next is management. We uh, OpenLM really comes to help you with uh, not needing to access the server, basically. So you can do a lot of things remotely using OpenLM. So you can upload license files. Uh, this can be a hassle. Like you get a hundred license files. You need to upload them to all your license servers. Good luck. Well, with OpenLM, you just, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. With OpenLM, you just do it from one place. You just click, upload, click, upload, click, and you're done. Like, uh, a minute. You can also start, stop the license manager. You can edit the options file remotely. You can do a lot of things remotely using OpenOM, which I'll show you later in the uh, second half of the presentation, which will be more of a demonstration of the tool and what you have. What else? Okay, we can see what's going on right now in the system. We have monitoring capabilities. We can even manage it. Man, I didn't go into any license manager. I didn't RDP anywhere in months. Cool. But why? Why are we doing this? To reduce spending. Basically, it all boils down to reduce spending. We are here to to tell you you don't need that uh, that many licenses, or of course you need more licenses. We give you the amount of licenses that you require to give your end users a certain quality of service, so they will get the license when they need it. Now there is one more thing that OpenLM can help you do besides reduce spending on licenses because, oh, you put OpenLM on your licensing system, you see, uh, well, I have 100 licenses, but well, I don't see concurrently, I don't see more than 20 people using them. 
So I can cut like 80 licenses. That's like an extreme, uh, extreme um, uh, example, but you get the point. You can cut down on the amount of licenses that you have once you know because you have historical data. But OpenOne can do more than that. Let's say, well, you dropped the 100 licenses that you have to 20 licenses. Woohoo, great, you got a raise. Wonderful. Now you can even increase the availability of those licenses. What do I mean? You got 20 licenses left. Well, are users actually using them? Maybe they opened up the application and I don't know, they're on Facebook, they went to a, a long meeting, they went home. I don't know, the application is open and it's idling, meaning that this can be cut as well. You can have all the licenses that you do have functioning fully on actual usage of users and no idle time spent, meaning that you have more licenses, more free or freer, I don't know, more of the time. So there's another thing that OpenOne helps you do is keep compliant, which let's say you don't care about spending. You have all the money you need, great. But you probably have a lot, of, a lot of licenses. You probably have a lot of vendors that you're working with. Uh, you probably will need to stay compliant. Now, this is what OpenOn helps you do. Keep compliant. You know exactly what's going on. You know if someone is misusing the application, if someone is using a feature that they shouldn't, you can even block them. So when you have a, an audit, for example, things are, are easier, much easier. Because, well, I have all the reports. I can even schedule them and you can get them if you want. Meaning that no vendor is gonna mess with you. You're gonna have all the reports all sorted out and you will have proof that you are fully compliant. So not only would you reduce spending, increase the license availability, you also keep compliant. So how is this going to be done? What do we do? Okay, Sagi, sounds cool. I'm on board, let's try it out. That's the good thing. You don't have to commit to anything. You don't have to pay anything to try it out for a POC. Just go ahead, just install it, try it out. What you get from this, uh, this course at the end of it, you get 90 days free for OpenLAMP Cloud. Now Cloud shows you the basic capabilities, so you'll be able to uh, estimate if you need OpenLAMP, if it helps you, and probably it will. But more on that later. So once you get a uh, cloud, OpenLM cloud, well, what do you need to do? How does it monitor the license managers that we talked about, all the different files? If you remember going back, we monitor the output, the license file, the debug log, the options file. So all these files basically are monitored by a component called the OpenLM broker. So on each license server, a license server can hold many license managers inside it. It could be installed FlexLM and then many different vendors and whatever. So brokers themselves will monitor those vendors and will send information to the OpenLM cloud. Now, just using your web interface, anyone you like, you can connect to OpenLM cloud. You, of course, log in using uh, the credentials that you'll get and set for yourself. And that's it. You can start working with it. Now, the broker is a very light Java application. You just, in, just put it on the license server, next, 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 and 
it finds all the license managers you have there. It checks all the ports, it checks all the files, where is it, and it configures it. Now you'll simply point it to the OpenLAN cloud instance that you have, and that's it. You're good to go. Now, which license managers are we monitoring? Well, let's jump to the OpenLAN site and go to License Manager, Supported License Manager. Now there is a long list of 40 license managers that we support, some cloud, some on-premise. And of course, you might recognize all the market leaders, uh, RMS, uh, RLM, LMX, HASP, Loom, Flexnet, SPLM, anything you'd like. And if you, have, if you have some that we don't support, then just tell us and we'll add it. This is how we add it all, well, all of them basically. Clients that ask for it and just added it. So for example, our latest additions are Zoo, Model, uh, model Modex 3D, and TLM, Tasking License Manager. These were added like, I don't know, maybe two months ago, something like that, real fresh out of the oven. So, going back here, and I think um, ending the first hour um, of all of our uh, meeting, let's try to understand what else OpenLM has. And basically, it's the tip of the iceberg. There are uh, 13, well now 14 different extensions, but, we're not going to dive too deep into all of them. That's a lot of information. You can find a lot of information on them uh, online on our website. But let's focus on the ones you will have. Because if you install the OpenOM Cloud associated with this course, then basically you'll also get this along with the basic functionalities, which I'll show you in a moment. So what will you get? Of course, you'll be able to group users into different um, group users into different category and get get the reports based on that. You'll be able to get alerts. For example, you've got a license file that's about to expire. You want to get notified. You can do that. Uh, something is about to be maxed out. You can do that. Someone is using for 20 days a license, and that's impossible. Well, you can do that. You can get notified on that. Is the options file, is the option of a non-cloud trial? Uh, Christian is asking. Yeah, uh, so you can download OpenLM on-premise at any time, you get free 30 day trial um, and you get everything open. So the, the options file, the alert management, the everything. Um, with the cloud, it's a bit more concise because it's only showing the, the basic uh, functionalities, functionalities currently of OpenLM and a few basic extensions. But of course, go to our website. I can't stop you from downloading uh, the latest OpenLM server. Just download it, install it, and that's it. Now, if you install the OpenLM server, so it will be the same thing here. The only difference is this this OpenLM server is not on our cloud. It's not in OpenLM. It will be just on your system. It will be um, on-prem. Does it detect the same way? Yes. Everything is detected the same way because the broker does the detection. The broker will be in the on-premise, it will be in the cloud. You will always use a broker because it reads all those files that we talked about. So yeah, doesn't matter what you use, it detects the same way and monitors basically almost the same amount of license manager. Okay, so what else? Once you group users, uh, 
you can get also alerted on those users behavior or on your systems behavior like a license server went down or whatever now you can get those users and and give them access to open on and you can decide who gets to see what who's a viewer who's an editor and who's an admin and so on so you got also roles and permissions in there and lastly you also get options file management now that means you can edit OpenLM, uh, is, sorry, you can edit the FlexLM options file from OpenLM using an interface. You don't have to type in text-based uh, uh, scripts. You just select this, select this user, restrict, select this, select this, reserve. Uh, it's super easy and it writes it automatically and deploys it automatically. I'm gonna show it to you in a moment. So I'm going to stop here. We're going to jump back to this slide right here. Once we're done with the demonstration of OpenLM, I'm going to present a, a few basic things in OpenLM and also a few basic extensions. Everything that we've talked about um, up until now, but show, don't tell. But before that, I would like to answer any questions if you have. So uh, go ahead, uh, take like five minutes, write your questions. I'll be happy to answer uh, before we jump into the demonstration. Hey, uh, Christian, great. So uh, we, got a, we got a question. Uh, will this work with OpenJDK or is it specific version of Java that's required? So uh, it comes bundled. With Java, you got uh, Java Open JDK uh, 11 already bundled, bundled in there. Uh, the broker itself, that's about the easiest component to install. It's just next, 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 boom, it's installed. Configuring it, it's not that difficult, but if you run into trouble, you got us, the Open Home support team. Uh, we'll be happy to help during POC, during evaluation. Or just you have any questions and you're not even a client, you can call, the, call us up. We'll be happy to help. Okay, so I'm going to let you write some questions in. Meanwhile, I'm going to get a glass of water. I'm all empty here. Uh, so I'll be back in one or two minutes. Please type in any questions you have. Okay. Okay, so nobody has questions. Hey, we got one. Um, Flexera FNMEA. Uh, yeah, I have a question from Harry. He asks about the difference. I think he's asking about the pricing difference. Flexera versus OpenLM. What is the key difference between the two? So first of all, price. That's, uh, that's for one. Uh, secondly, we do much more than monitoring. Um, our monitoring is much more, uh, well, I'll show you. It's um, in a more granular resolution. It's you got current activity. You can interact with session. You can manage, remotely manage applications. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to copy files. You don't, it's fully automatic. The main differences, well, there are many. Uh, I'm just gonna let you decide. Um, try out OpenLM, see for yourself. 
if you can try out the Xera, see for yourself. Um, I don't know, but again, this uh, this information might be might be wrong. This is what we know up until now. Maybe Fixera has uh, many uh, improvements there. I'm not sure. But I'm going to show you all the differences. The fact that, uh, oh, I have a few more here. How often are license recognition and THC, THC, I'm not sure, TN, TNC updated. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, so please type type again and uh, terms and conditions. Okay. Uh, so do you mean by the vendors? So the vendors themselves, they constantly change uh, their terms and conditions. They constantly change their license file. This is a problem that OpenLearn has to deal with. Let's say Autodesk is now uh, giving you a license in a different format because this uh, new version of them, and they give out a different format of the license. Well, OpenLM knows to also monitor that. We have a ded dedicated team that works on new license managers and new versions of existing license managers. So yeah, as I said, OpenLM basically gets all the all the outputs that the license manager can give you regarding that vendor everything and gets it into open log. okay so <clears throat> as I said I'm gonna jump away from here And I'm just going to show you the system. I'm going to show you a live system and everything that we've talked about. We said that OpenLM can help you with monitoring, with management, with the compliance, with reducing licenses, with increasing availability, all these great things. Well, let's put our money where our mouth is. Well, what are we seeing here? Current activity. What's going on right now in the system? Now this is a demo, a small demo system right here. I have Autodesk, I, I have some ArcGIS, some ANSYS, but it can scale up tremendously. This is a database, a real client database that we got and encrypted, so you'll see some wonky names there. But it's like 200 licensed servers. Okay, uh, can you see my screen, guys? I understand that we're having issues seeing my screen. Let me try and reshare. Okay, so if you, you're saying that I have, um, I am, you are seeing my screen, then great, I'll just uh, continue. Okay, so this can scale up dramatically, as you see. You see 200 licensed servers. You see FlexLM, you see Loom, you see DSLS, BetaLM, many, 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 LSDyna, many different license managers, all in one place. And you got all their quantities, all their features, everything. So let's jump to my system here, which is smaller easier to explain on. So what are we seeing here? Let's take Autodesk. I've got 45 licenses. Let's drill into 45, these 45 licenses. Oh, wait. These 45 licenses are actually 10, 5, and 30 licenses of these different features. I'm scrolling to the right, I can actually see who's using them right now. For example, let's take this case. 
if anyone wants to get that license, he's going to get denied because it's 30 out of 30. Let's see who's using it. Now, <clears throat> now we can see Zoe and Alan, Alyssa, Steve, we got, we got users currently using this application. We see how long they're using it, which workstation they're using it from, and basically anything. If it's borrowed, the linger time, the license type, anything. Everything that regards the session itself. Now there's one thing that OpenLM can also do is close idling sessions. It can show you that this session is currently idling. Yeah, he's working 11, uh, 11 hours, but is he idling? Did he work for like two hours and the rest is like idling on Facebook or something? Well, we don't know. OpenLM can help us know that. Now, I'm going to show you that in a moment. We don't have that here just yet, but we'll get to that. So that's cool. We see <clears throat> current activity, what's going on right now in our system, and we can scale it up and see basically all our system. So if someone calls us up, hey, I don't have a license, what's going on? You can just scroll to the server, go to the license, and bam, you see what's going on, who's using it, and for how long. Now, once we open that, we can also <coughs> start and stop the license manager, even reread a license file. Now, clicking here on files, we can upload the license file. Now, if you have these many license servers, this is basically a godsend. You can just click here, upload, click, upload, click, upload, and that's it. You don't have to RDP to the server, open up the, uh, the right folder, add it in there, and do that 200 times. So Harry is asking about product names in OpenLM. Uh, they are aligned to product names from contract or PO. This is what he's asking. Well, no, they are aligned with, uh, well, they are, but uh, it's not connected like, let's say, ServiceNow does. We do have those names. We have the list of many, many applications, and we fill the product name of those so you don't only see let me show you here you don't only see the feature which is like uh, pretty much gibberish you also have a product name now if we didn't get that product name you can add it yourself you can it's editable okay uh, I are you seeing my screen? I see Oren is having issues of seeing it. Just let me know, guys, if you can see it, everything's okay, and I'll continue. Okay, so Harry is asking about, uh, worry about the add-ons that come out during the year or patches from vendors. Yeah, this is exactly what we do. This is exactly why OpenLM has so many developers working on it. All the different add-ons, all the different changes and patches from the vendors, this is exactly what we do. We got a dedicated team of de developers that every time that we even sense that something is about to change, they quickly do a change, a fix, and we install upgrade to OpenLM. That's it, you have it already. Okay, so we saw that we can manage the application. I'm just gonna stop sharing, reshare, just in case you can't see my screen. Now, 
That's cool. We see what's going on right now in the licensing system. We can get a bird's eye view of what's happening. Cool. But where is the saving? Where is the reducing cost? Where is the historical information? Well, let me take you that. There we go. I'm going to take you over four reports, maybe five that tell the story of OpenLM. Now, OpenLM has a story to tell. The first one is what's going on right now in your system? Why are people calling you up and saying, hey, I don't, I don't have licenses, please help me? Fine. Well, that's first. Second is historical information. Well, am I using my licenses correctly? Because, okay, I got people calling me up. I, I put out all the fires right now, but Maybe I need to do some changes. Maybe I need more licenses. Maybe I need less licenses because my boss is always telling me we're paying a lot of a lot of money on licenses. So I'm going to take this graph and show you two sides of it. Let's say that you open up this report on a very expensive license a very expensive feature might be i don't know enix for example so we have 70 licenses but you get a, a huge time span and you see that it was really never reused over 15 concurrently now keep in mind that this is concurrent usage meaning overlapping usage we're talking about floating licenses which is like seats in a concert and you're not going to put two people on the same seat seat one on top of the other well maybe if he's a baby anyway what we see here is a clear picture i have too many licenses man i'm spending a lot of money on licenses great i can reduce the amount of licenses next time i purchase licenses next time i renew my policy well i know what to buy i know i need well at least like 20 licenses i can reduce a lot of licenses here but okay let's take a different situation let's say that you know the amount of licenses that you have and feel pretty uh, you have your head on your shoulders okay what are we seeing here we are seeing here a situation of a very healthy license so you can get approved on that and you know that you're compliant and you have the amount of licenses that you need so what we usually see we see users start start out like this well not exactly like this but start out like this and end open uh, using openlm in a, in a situation where they decrease the amount of licenses so much that they guess get this graph. It's a very good graph. You see it pre it's pretty healthy. You got 70 and it sometimes it peaks to 70 and mostly not. And you might even be able to decrease the amount of licenses even more. Now, okay, let's take a look at, at a different view. So we've seen a full year. Now uh, we can see it by the hours of the day, as you see on top, and the days of, basically the days of the week, all the different days on the left here. So right away, it pops up that all usage, most usage, is concentrated within the working hours, within seven until four. We, got, we see it already here, weekend, Saturday, Sunday, mostly green so let's say you got users in sweden and they got this they got these work blocks well you've got another office in mexico maybe you can use just one set of license one set of global licenses maybe you don't need two sets of licenses for mexico and also for sweden so you get a clear picture with open arm Now, let's say 
that at this point, there were no more licenses left. Now, what happened at this point? Users got denied. There were 70 licenses, 70 seats in the concert, and the 71st user came into the concert and he had to stand. He didn't get a license, didn't get a seat. So this denial, denial of service is registered here in OpenLM. So this denials report complements the license user report by showing you what happened above the license quantity line. Well, this peaked right here, but did it peak? Did you, ha did you have like a thousand denials prompting you to buy more licenses? First of all, panic and buy more licenses because it's a thousand uh, denials, but, or maybe it's just 10 denials, something manageable, something that you might know how many licenses you'll need to buy. Maybe you just don't need to buy so many licenses, just one occurrence, it happens one day. Maybe you get to be the judge. OpenLOM helps you to get an informed decision on that. It helps you to know exactly what's going on in your system, how well is it used, and what's going on beyond that. Now, okay, you're probably thinking, uh, cool, but I didn't really see a concrete number yet. You told me that OpenLine can help me reduce the license spending. And OK, how, how many licenses do I need here? Like uh, 65, do I need 70? OK, come on, where is the concrete number? Well, we got the license utilization report, which gives you just that. It tells you, boom, you need 45 licenses. You have 70, but you can drop it down to, to reach a certain quality of service. Now, what's quality of service? Let's say that you're okay with the fact that users will get the license they need 95% of the times. Statistically speaking, 5% of the times that they'll try to get denied. But let's say that you're okay with 95%. Well, it tells you you need 45 licenses. But we can also ignore weekends and consider the working hours only. But we still see a reduction. We got 70 and we need 56 licenses. Now, some licenses cost, cost a whole lot of money. Some licenses may go up to like $10,000 just for one license. So any reduction is good. And what we usually see is anywhere between 10 to 20% reduction just from this report we didn't even talk about anything else we didn't talk about increasing availability or anything just from this report now we can also complement that with the licenses not in use report which shows you okay here you need this amount of licenses but but there are there features i'm just not using i never used i, I don't need them at all so this report can show it to you licenses not in use it tells you uh, the features that are not in use and how many are not just not in use so you can see oh so no one has ever used noviceworks i don't need to buy that maybe i i, I can get a different package but it really depends because um, it depends on the vendor itself if it's autodesk it's not exactly the same case but it does allow you to know exactly which features you can drop out of a certain package or just not purchase at all. Now, these are the basic reports of OpenLM. There's one more that allows you to, sh to see the activity, basically all the sessions. <clears throat> it's just a full list of all the sessions, what's going on, all their details, idle time, usage time, everything. And all these reports basically tell the story of OpenLM. They tell the story of how OpenLM helps you save money on licenses. Now you understand that we gather everything, give you the amount that you're using, 
the amount that you need and what you don't actually need. From here, I'm going to go into a few extensions of OpenAlarm to show you the benefits of it. I have a question. So these reports are applicable to any products for which you are tracking, from PTC to DS to Adobe to Microsoft. Yes, correct. All the different license managers, all the different applications, all the different vendors, they all go into the same data set. They are chopped up, configured, to all be normalized. So the interface can show it to you like that. Okay. So <clears throat> let's take a look at what you'll get. Going back here to the extensions, I want to go over, uh, well, two extensions, main extension. Alert management, and options file because they're more tangible. Group usage, roles information, less tangible. Let me show you alerts management and options file management. Let me show you what that is. First of all, let's go to options file management. Basically, it allows us to add text to the options file and then just send it remotely. So this is an options file, this mess here. We got this group, preserve a license for this group, preserve to you for this group and yada, yada, yada. Now, if it's just 10 rows, well, yeah, you can do it yourself if you want, but it gets crazy. You might have 10,000 users so you need to define which users use what and it can be like two megabytes of a file it can be a monster of a file and you get a lot of different license a lot of different license managers with many different options file what a mess so with openalarm you can simply choose the options file that you need choose the feature you just add a user, add a group, add a host, whatever you need, and just, just click what you want. For example, exclude Sagi from this feature. So I just added Sagi, clicked exclude, save it, and it's populated right here. Exclude Sagi from this feature. Then you simply click deploy and that's it. You can forget about it. There, there will be no, no syntax errors. You don't have to really think about what goes where, what needs to come first and nothing. OpenOM does it for you. It's a great tool. Now let's take a look at the alerts, uh, alerts options that, that you'll get. What will you be able to know? First of all, basic, if the license server is down, you get a notification, hey, go check that. Call IT, start up the server, I don't know, whatever you need to do, you need to do it. The license server is down. Meaning that the users will not get licenses, you will get a lot of calls and end the day with a headache. So you can just get a, notif get a notification. Usage percentage means that a license is maxing out. You've got, I don't know, you've got uh, a, a thousand licenses and you've got 999 licenses currently in, you, in use. You need to clear some licenses. You need to close some workstations. You need to do whatever it is you do to clear licenses, to get licenses available for users. So you can get notified and the system tells you, hey buddy, something's going on. Users are about to get denied, go. So then you just do whatever you need. Then you decrease the load however, however you can. Now, duplicate license usage, if you've got someone naughty that's uh, opened up 
two applications and using two licenses at the same time on the same workstation or different workstations. So you could want to get notified. You can also get have him notified and 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 he'll get an email saying, "Hey, buddy, uh, why are you using two? How many hands do you got?" Uh, so ex expiration days. That's basically for the licenses. It can be 30 days, but it can it's, it could be whatever you like. You can get notified before a license gets expired. So you don't get surprised and you don't have to make purchases at the last minute. You know, you'll get a notification. Hey, um, Autodesk, please check that. You'll have like 90 days and boom, Autodesk. Hey, check, you got like 30 days. You get notified and prompted to do that. So usage period, that's basically a user that got a license and is using it for too long. Let's say I'm using for 20 hours. I shouldn't be able to use 20 hours. Um, basically, I might be idling, I might be not using it actually. It's too much. So you can get notified on it. And he can also get notified with an email saying uh, that, Hey, you've been using for too long. Are you asleep? Uh, so maximum number of denials, that's that's basically uh, something's wrong with the system. You got a lot of denials. The license server is up. The files, the license files are good. Everything seems to be all right. But everybody's getting denied. What's going on? So you want to get notified. You want to know that users are currently not able to use the application. So before they call you up, you know, and you start working on it. And you pick up the phone and say, yes, yes, I know, I'm working on it. And not in a default group or project, if you have all your users grouped, then if someone is using any application and is not within a group, then who's that guy? That's unauthorized usage. What's going on there? Why aren't you a part of any group in my Active Directory? And that's basically it. That's basically all I want to go over today. I know it's a lot of information to take in. We started way, way from the top. We, we talked about what are software licenses, talked about the license admin, uh, continued to the license manager, and how OpenOM helps you with that uh, with that licensing system. Now let's talk about us. There's another meeting. There's another session. If you want to join, you are most welcome. If you want to just do it for yourself, just I want to do it for myself and I don't want to join the session, okay, no problem. You can also do that. If you go to openlm.com, you can search for anything you'd like. For example, uh, FlexLM, I want to know how to configure it. So you just type in FlexLM, type in broker, type in server, whatever you need. You got a, a huge set of data dedicated to all the support needs that you want, but you can also contact us. So contact sales, support, call us up in any of those numbers, even just call us up on chat. Click here and then someone will, now, will answer for sure. This is the fastest way to get in touch with us. So for the next meeting, for the next session, you'll need to have a few things ready because we'll be doing an installation of the OpenLM broker on a license manager. We'll set up, a, a, we'll set up an instance of OpenLM Cloud and we'll connect the two and have a party at the end. No, not really. Um, so what will you need to do? First of all, download OpenLM Broker. Where do you download it from? Go to OpenLM, OpenLM website, downloads, either custom area or free trial. You have it at the bottom, Broker. Just download it, place it on the license manager, on the license server, and just wait. 
Now make sure that the license managers will be up and running so the broker will be able to detect them while we install. Make sure to have uh, Chrome, Firefox or Edge as the browser so you'll be able to access your OpenOM instance on the cloud. And lastly, you will need to have internet access on the licensed servers because to remind you, the broker sits on the licensed server and it needs to send information to the OpenOM cloud, which is, oops, which is on the internet. So you'll need to have a port open to the internet, port 443. And that's basically it, guys. I know this was a lot. This is a course, after all. I really don't want to overload you with information because, wow, OpenLM has a lot. I can keep talking about OpenLM for, for weeks. I actually am doing it, so not lying. <laughs> um, what, uh, what do I want from you now? Well, approve the next meeting, have the things ready. And if you have any questions, go ahead. You can type, it in, type them in the questions box of the GoToWebinar tool. But if you don't want to stay, I would thank you very much for joining me on this course. I hope it was informative. I hope you learned something about OpenLM or the licensing or the licensing um, environment in general. Um, that's it. So if you guys have any questions, then go ahead. So can, do you know if it can parse Altair PBS logs? Altair, uh, I'm not sure that Altair uh, is a, a, a license server that we support. Let's uh, make sure. I believe not. Oh, I got Altium. No, not Altair. We do have, um, how is it? Elemix, which uses Altair technology as well. Harry, thank you very much. I will hopefully stay safe, as safe and healthy as possible. You too. Uh, all of you guys, keep safe, stay healthy, and uh, thanks. Thank you very much. Bye, Harry. And Christian, for your question, uh, yeah, no, uh, so we do not support it. We support Elemix, which also has Altair um, Altair components. Some Altair um, applications use Elemix, that is, meaning that we can support it. The good thing about OpenLM, you test it out for yourself. I say it's, it's supported in part, depending on which license manager you have. You can test it out. As I said, free trial or, of course, the cloud version of OpenLM. If you don't want to wait up for me, then yeah, just uh, download it for yourself, install the broker, set up your own SaaS. It's pretty simple. You can find documentation on it, but you can just wait up for me for the next uh, session and we'll do it together. The next, next session will basically be a hands-on tutorial. We'll install the broker and we'll see all the different files that we've that we talked about the output license file the bug log options file we'll see where they're configured we'll configure them we'll see how to configure openlm on the other side on the cloud side connect them and that's basically it we'll probably do a few more things i'll show you a few more extensions as well but that will be it, a hands-on installation, and we'll go deep into the technical details.
Cheers, Harry. So, meanwhile, while you're writing questions, happy to help, Christian. Um, let me know if you need any more information, call us up, we're happy to help. Okay, so while you're kind of typing your questions, I'm just playing around here. Kind of open up, uh, opened up AutoCAD. And let's say I'm naughty, I'm not using it. So we can also see that in open one. You can see that Sagi is now using it, using this feature. And scrolling to the right in a few minutes, we'll start seeing my idle time. We'll see that I'm being naughty, I'm not actually using the application. Now, as the admin, I can just click close app, and the app will just be closed automatically. Or I can just set the idle time to do that. So if anyone's idling for more than three hours, save his work, close his application. So basically clicking on that, we'll come here, using a component called the OpenOM agent, and it will close the application. Now this is more in tune with the increasing availability because those, uh, those sessions are now cut. And you see, the application was closed. I got a message, hey, the application was closed. I can reopen it if I want. Thus, I won't be wasting the license sitting idle. And just another treat for you for while you're writing questions. Okay, guys, so I see nobody has any questions. Thank you very much for joining me on this course. I really enjoyed it, actually. It's usually I do it more buttoned down. It's more of a webinar, more formal, but this is a course. It's more fun. I kind of liked it. So have a great day, guys. Andrew, I see you raised your hand. Do you have a question there? Okay. Uh, Christian, the next part, the installation, uh, I think will be done, I, I'm not sure, next week. It's up to marketing to set this up. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, just about next week. The next thing and next part I'm going to do is go to bed because <laughs> it's pretty late here. <laughs> You too, Christian. Bye.